And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Catan Explorers and Pirates. This is an expansion for Catan or the Settlers of Catan. Uh, there's been many, many expansions as time has gone by, but there's only been a few what I call big box expansions. The first was Seafarers of Catan, then they had uh, the Cities and Knights of Catan, and then they had the one that added a whole bunch of merchants and, and stuff of Catan. And now we have Explorers and Pirates. This is the fourth big box expansion for Catan. And what what this does is, well, it essentially takes the game in a different direction than the previous ones did. Very similar to the way Cities and Knights took it in a different direction. Uh, but, well, you know what? I don't want to jump into my opinion. Let's take a look at what the game adds, and then we'll be back. I'm going to assume that you already know how to play Settlers of Catan, dear watcher, so I'm not going to explain that again. But what this game does is it adds several rules, and each rule that it adds has a scenario involved. What I'm showing you here is the final scenario that has all the rules of the game involved because I didn't want to show them to you one at a time. You can play with all of them involved and really you could start with this if you're an experienced gamer and really just jump into the whole game at one time. You can see here that you have many hexes on the side. You're going to need these from the original game. The original game, you're also going to need the roads from it and the settlements from the original game, as well as the uh, cards, the resource cards. And that's pretty much it, because most of the pieces for this game uh, come from this expansion. And what this does is this kind of changes the way the whole game works. Now, some things are the same. At the beginning of your turn, you're still going to roll dice. And if you have a settlement or one of these new uh, port settlements uh, ne next to a number, you will gain one resource of that type. There is no longer any city, so you won't get two resources for being next to anything. If you don't get a resource card in your turn and the numbers rolled are not for you and you yell curses at the dice people, you will get a gold coin. There's a whole pile of gold here. Gold is fantastic because gold can be traded two for one for any resource. So essentially, if you get nothing, you get half a wild because that's what gold is. Also, you'll notice that there's no harbors around the outside of the board. So what instead, the trading, when you trade, you will trade three for one with the bank whenever there's something you want. I can trade three wheat for one sheep. You will find, and maybe maybe I'm incorrect here, but I feel pretty confident that trading happens a whole lot less in this game. Now, one of the things that players can be doing in this game is they're going to be using their ports to build ships. Ships here uh, will start at a port and then they will move from side to side on these hexes and the game is very convenient in that it's left the outside of the board open so that you can, there's all sorts of places that you can go. When you end your turn pointing a ship at a hex and ships can move four spaces each turn when you end your turn facing a hex we will reveal that hex you've discovered it and you will get one resource of the type that is there now you'll notice that the board here is split into sun spaces and moon spaces that's because if i reveal one i will then take one of the matching tokens here's a moon token turn it over and now this is the number there is a nine now, one of the new things you can build, and there's a whole card here for things that you can build. You can see that you can now build settlements and settlers. You can build the harbor settlement. You can build crew. You can build ships. And uh, you can even pay sheep to move your ships extra spaces, one or two spaces. You can pay sheep to do that. But one of the things you can build is a settler. This settler uh, will fit onto your ship. Yeah, they are big fat people, so they take up the whole ship. And so you build that for the cost of a settlement, and when they land here, you can dump them off where they immediately change into a settlement. Now, I'm not sure why they thought the extra piece was necessary. I mean, you could put a settlement on a ship, but then again, that does look a little dorky, I suppose. So that's one of the things that you can do. And as you go around, you will find different styles of land. Sometimes you'll find open sea, in which case you'll get two gold. And 
uh, this will remind you somewhat of the Seafarer's expansion. But what this game has is some other things that you can discover as time goes by. One of the things that you can discover are pirate lairs. When you discover a pirate lair, they basically are gold hexes, you will put a pirate's lair on top of this. Now, to conquer a pirate's lair, you're going to have to drop off troops. You will do so by building these little sailors who can go in your boat. Now, these sailors are thin, which means that your boat can hold two of them. So whenever you go to one of these spots, you can drop one of your guys off. Now, you can drop more people off. Uh, if you have them and it only takes three total for the, the tile to be flipped over when that happens everybody involved is going to get two gold we'll flip it over to find what the number is and anyone who has a settlement next to this place now will get two gold whenever a five is rolled on the dice these people the, uh, are going to roll off to see who has done the best in that pirate lair. And in fact, they're going to go over to this board over here on the side. Each player is going to have a piece on this board here. And every time a pirate lair is defeated, you get to move your token up one on this board, which shows how many victory points you're worth, one, two, or three, depending on how far you move up. Whoever does the best job fighting the pirates moves up an extra spot. We do that by rolling the die. You will add that die to the number of people you sent to that island. And then you have to remove one of your pirate, one of your soldiers that you've sent. But you get to move up an extra space, which is great because whoever is the highest here gets the greatest pirate scourge, which is worth an additional victory point. Now you say, wait a minute, Vassal, I see two other charts here. Fish for Catan and Spices for Catan. Yes, because not only are there pirate lairs out there, but you can find fishing spots. There's six fishing spots scattered across the board. Each of these fishing spots has a number on them. At the beginning of your turn, you are allowed to roll a die, and if you roll a number that matches a fishing spot, you will place a fish there. Your ship can come along and pick up that fish. It can then take that fish back to the main guild here and drop that off. And every time you do that, then you get to move up a spot here on the fishing chart. And again, you can get points by that and you can also be, uh, you can also be the best fisher and give you extra points. So that's another way to get points. And then finally, another thing you can discover is you can discover native settlements. When you discover these, each time one is uh, found on the board, and there's uh, three on each side, on the sun and on the, on the moon side, you will be able to drop off a sailor. If you have a sailor, you can drop that sailor off, and that will give you a bag of spice. Each of these starts with bags of spices. That bag of spice can be put on your ship. It basically takes up the same amount of space as one of the sailors that you have. And you can take that bag of spice back to the guild and drop it off to move up on the spice track over here, which is just like the pirate lair and fisherman thing. But also it will give you a special ability. Each of these, uh, for example, over here, you can see that all your boats can now move an extra spot five instead of four. Here I can, instead of trading in uh, two gold for a card of my choice, once per turn I can trade in one card for, I mean one coin for a card of my choice. And here I can pay five when fighting off pirates. You say, wait a minute, Vassal, what are you talking about pirates? Oh yes, there's no robber in this game. When you roll a seven on the dice, you get to put a pirate on the board. And you get to put him on any hex, except for the hexes that are next to the starting island here. Whenever a player tries to go by your pirate, they have to pay that pirate a gold, or they cannot go by him. Now, they can try to fight him off if they start their turn next to a pirate, and they have to roll a six. Unless, of course, they got that special ability, then they can roll five or six, or maybe a four six, or maybe even a four five or six to get rid of the pirate. If they get rid of the pirate, the pirate is gone and they get to put their own pirate out. And whenever you put a pirate out, it's just like the robber. You steal a random resource from one of the ships next to you. But it also has this ability where if I'm going to try to go next to the pirate, you can demand tribute. Pirates also can chase away fish if they are in a place next to a spot where fish are located. So those are basically all the new rules. There's different points for each scenario. How far, how many points you want to get. Uh, to finish that scenario, obviously the more things you add, the higher the point total needs to be.
There's no denying that this expansion adds in a lot of the things that we've seen creep into the Catan series over the very specific Catans, where we had the uh, Catan uh, America, we had Catan Germany, we had different settlers of Catans and several of the th concepts that were brought into them, like the concept of gold uh, has been brought in, the concept of picking goods up and moving them, making this essentially a pickup and delivery good. We've seen that before, but now it's basically being added to the base game. This is not so much an expansion to the game as basically you take pieces from the original game, put them in this box, and this then would be almost like a whole game of itself. I mean, yes, it's an expansion, but it just does things differently. It's not like you say, well, I'm going to take Settlers of Catan and add in the pirate layers. No, uh, you, you need to play this kind of separate from everything else. I mean, I don't know if you can mix this with some of the other stuff. I'm having a hard time thinking how you would. As I said when I was going over the rules, I don't think it's difficult to put everything together in this and play them all. For new people, maybe it's best to teach them one thing at a time. First, I mean, the, the, the rule book does that. First, you do ships and finding new islands. Then they add pirates layers. Then they add uh, the fish. Then they add the spice islands. And then, then you put it all together. Well, I don't think it's that difficult. And to me, it's best when it puts it all together because there's different strategies people can take. One guy can go for fish, another guy can go for spices, another guy can go fight pirates, another guy can just try to go out and, and build as many settlements and as things as he, as he used to. It's gonna be weird for people because there's no development cards, there's no cities, there's no longest road, which is you know one of the tenets of settlers. There's no, you know, uh, there's there's no largest army. So those things are gone. But I, I think it's good. Now I think the point totals in these scenarios are a little higher than I'd want them to be. I think each of them is like two or three points higher than I would want. I think the the one that I showed you with all everything is like 17 points. I think I put that more at 14 points. You still get a pretty long game out of the deal. Also, I mentioned, and I, I think trading is 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 lessened in this with other players. Not so much there because you 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 can use almost all your resource. Now it's not gone. Trading still happens, but it's not as critical as it was in Settlers of Catan. Trading is an, e, an essential part of the game. Here, not quite so much. So, with all that taken into account, what do I think of it? Well, I like it. I mean, I'm not head over heels in love with this expansion, but I think it's a very good solid one, and I certainly think it's better than Cities and Knights, and almost might replace Seafarers, because with this one, it does a lot of the stuff that Seafarers did, but it does it in a better streamlined fashion. In fact, I would not be surprised if eventually someday we see no more Seafarers, and this takes the place of Seafarers, because it does, it has that exploration in the seas, it has pirates, and what did seafarers do that this one doesn't? You know, you're basically building a road of boats, which was a harder thing thematically than here where you actually move boats around. So I can see that happening. For me right now, this is my uh, scenario of choice for Settlers of Catan. So I'm going to do what I said. I'm going to take everything that's needed to play this and put it in one box. And if I want to play with the other stuff, then I can switch them out later on. But if I'm playing Settlers, this will be the first thing I pull out. It won't be hard to teach to people who played Settlers before, and it's a good solid scenario which offers a lot of choice and some interaction as you move things around. The pirate ship to me is more fun than the robber because you, that, that having to pay him by, and so you're thinking, where can I strategically place my ship so that the other ships are forced to come by me uh, and pay their tribute as they go to sell their spices and fish and things. It's a neat concept, not difficult, and a good solid fourth expansion for Settlers of Catan. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.